Do you like what I'm wearing? Of course you do. What I'm wearing right now is the Kunbi Weave, also known as the unmarked ODOV of Goa, the one district, one product that Goa should have had, but still continues to remain not so much acclaimed as the ODOV of Goa. Today we are here discussing and resurrecting the threads of tradition, the Kunbi Sari of Goa. In the land of sun-kissed beaches and lush green landscapes, there exists a tapestry of tradition woven into the very fabric of Goa. It's a tradition that whispers stories of resilience, identity and the undying spirit of its people. This tradition is the Kunbi Sari, a vibrant, checked sari that radiates colours of Goan heritage. What is Kunbi? Kunbi saris, the pride of Goan culture, are a testament to simplicity and elegance. These saris predominantly feature bright red checks, like you can see, woven with threads that symbolize the very essence of Goan traditions. The palette of the Kunbi saris is not limited to red, though. You will find them adorned in various shades, with red as the dominant color. They are a celebration of Goan life, vibrant and unapologetically bold. Kunbi is derived from kun and bi, meaning people and seeds, respectively. Fused together, the two terms mean those who germinate more seeds from one seed. The fabric meant for the farmland labourers mainly is their identity. Touted to be the oldest weave of the state, the saris are said to have been the staple garment of women of the Kunbi tribe. Kunbi cannot be spoken about without thanking the revered fashion designer of Goa, Mr. Wendell Rodericks. The late Wendell actually won the Padma Shri for promoting his local art, called the Kunbi. Kunbi is a supposed weave that is traditionally red because it denotes fertility. Wendell's collection of Kunbi saris are ethnic Indian and modern at the same time, to be worn by urban women. Wendell's firm used this fabric to create modern garments with ethnic patterns and designs. In fact, Wendell is famous for its exquisite Indian pastel colored saris, which are handcrafted in India with a traditional Kunbi silk. The story of the Kunbi sari begins with the Kunbi tribe, one of the oldest communities to call Goa home, even before the Portuguese set foot on its shores. The sari's origin, shrouded in the myths of time, is deeply intertwined with the Kunbi people's agricultural way of life. Heard from some of the locals that the old Kunbi is no more the case. In, Go in 1970, Goa is where it was conceptualized. Social political reasons got it out of Goa and more got manufactured outside than within Goa. Light, airy and designed to be worn just below the knee, it allowed the women to toil in the paddle fields while keeping cool under the scorching Goa sun. These saris were initially worn by women in the Kunbi and Garwa tribes who worked in the fields with grace and resilience. The simplicity of the design in the Kunbi saris also makes them stand out. These saris do not have any motifs. Instead, they only feature patterns of squares and checks embodying the very essence of the Goan countryside. Local fashion designers from Goa attend a lot of fashion shows abroad, but they rarely find the Kunbi represented in its true fashion and form anyway. It is said, and in my research we found, that Kunbi used to be a weave meant for the working class. The upper caste used to shy away from wearing the Kunbi because it was supposed to be the workers' weave. Like women love to invest in a Paitani or a Kanjivaram or a Jamdani, why don't they like to invest in a Kunbi? It is a question that you and I should ask ourselves. Every culture and its art form needs someone to protect it. And for that someone to protect it, it is often the government and the government-led bodies that actually rise up to the occasion. Just one simple reason, the requirement of funds to protect culture. What to your mind can replace the authenticity of something that is exclusively made, woven, built for you? The Kunbi is one such preservation worth its time. While I was conducting my research, I realized that the government definitely is looking to promote the weave. You want to know what is the Goa government doing to support the Kunbi workers? Let me tell you a few things. In 2016, Goa's Directorate of Handicrafts, Textiles and Coir began making targeted efforts to revive the handloom industry. 
especially the Kunbi hand weave. As a result, the number of trained handloom weavers in Goa has steadily increased. A handful of weavers have also received advanced training to weave 100 thread count checked Kunbi saris measuring 6 meters. A lot of looms, even the Kunbi village is being set up in the honor of the weave and anyone can come and display their art, can make the Kunbi if they'd like and train themselves to become a weaver. In fact, when one of the local designers represented the Kunbi in a fashion show in France with some of the top models wearing Kunbi led designs, it turned out to be such a huge rage. I have found that the Kunbi village is actually being set up as a tourist destination and the Department of Handicrafts is working hard towards it along with the government to make it yet another place for tourists and a different kind of tourism so that it becomes a way to know another side of Goa. Sales, of course, is important because that is what drives further ambition and effort. The government helps the local Kunbi weavers with yarn as much as they'd like. But I didn't find whose target it is in these government departments and quasi-government bodies to actually push the cause. Maybe because the GI tag isn't there yet. The geographical indication tag isn't there yet. But why not? Why is it not an ODOP product of Goa, like a cashew and a fenny? Why isn't Gunbi a part of the Goa ODOP? The Gunbi sari, despite its rich history and cultural significance, is notably absent from Goa's ODOP list. As you know from our chapter one on Paitani, applicants under the scheme receive support by way of preparation of the project report, skill training, obtaining bank credit, operating licenses, the Udyam registration, and so on and so forth under the ODOP scheme. The exclusion of the Kunbi Sari from Goa's ODOP repertoire can be attributed to several factors, including limited awareness, market demand, and the need for scalable production. The Kunbi Sari's revival is a recent phenomenon. Thanks to the visionary efforts of fashion designer Wendell Rodericks and the Goa Directorate of Handicrafts, Textiles and Koi. Is it possible they don't see scale here yet? Is it possible that the district can be pinpointed for Kunbi is not defined yet? Because if that happens, then as per the ODOP scheme, that district becomes the global manufacturing hub and a leading exporter, fueling economic growth, generating employment and rural entrepreneurship for that product. The mandate of ODOP initiative includes identifying, understanding and solving problems associated with each of the chosen products at all points in their respective supply chains, improving the market accessibility of the chosen products and dedicated handholding of the producers to harness export potential from that region. And there is the case of the Dobby border, which is difficult to learn and takes time to skill oneself in. It is essentially the flattened silk inlay that borders the sari, giving it the finishing touch it needs to exclusively stand out. The dobby border is what actually gives the kunbi the look and feel that it has. It is tough to learn, but it is in essence the whole point of kunbi's beautiful appearance. It is time consuming to learn and is perhaps the key point of drawback. And of course, there are other detractions. Sometimes power looms overbear the speed and accuracy of the hand loom. It's not the same, but at least it is cheaper and more widely available. Nothing works like targets being set up, officials being forced on their hand to actually execute what the government wants to get executed. Perhaps if that could happen, so much more could open up for this weave. The government understands that, hence the push for higher production. You have to show your seriousness in preserving an art form, even if it has traditionally belonged to you. There needs to be greater revolutions in this space. There needs to be more commitment to the cause. Simple things, perhaps with the rest of the country, is busy executing, like attaching the NFT, the non-fungible token, to every weave. Of course, the Kunbi already enjoys the Goa government's push towards gaining the GI tag of belonging to Goa, just like its Makurad mangoes and the well-known Bibinka. Such innovative thoughts could perhaps want to be innovations we could work up to increase the price and value of every Kunbi product, which is unique in itself and cannot be recreated. There is one major issue that I encountered while my interactions with a lot of stakeholders in this space. 
one thing came out very clearly that the weavers need more training during our interactions with mr shubraj kanekar who like i told you is the key swayam purnamitra in the village of surla in goa he stated that a lot of people came to the training but only 15 stayed to continue weaving the art we need to understand that the weavers need to learn different styles different methods different patterns to up their game this sometimes can be taxing on their current time and their current commitment to whatever it is that they are doing but will definitely help them in the longer term this could be a huge issue when something as large as the kunbi village comes up in goa there would be shortage of skilled labor within the kunbi space because weavers are not trained to take on the pressure what are the issues with the kunbi weavers let me tell you some of them An ironic twist of fate shows the Kunbi sarees resurgence. Despite its profound social significance, the handlooms of Goa, where the sarees was once woven, have fallen silent. The traditional knowledge of crafting this intricate weave was almost lost, and there was a dearth of historical documentation. Power loom fabrics from other states flooded Goa's markets, making it difficult for Kunbi sarees to compete. The challenges were further compounded by the labor-intensive process, the patience required for national dyes, and the challenges are further compounded by the labor-intensive process, the patience required for natural dyes, and the scarcity of raw materials. But all hope is not lost, as I interacted with the department of handicraft and I came back with understanding that there are certain schemes that the government has initiated for the benefit of the kunbi weavers a lot of times these things are being handed over on a platter they just have to come and take it at the central level too there are trainings being imparted by the development commission of handlooms there is something called the pehchan card where every weaver can train themselves get themselves upskilled and then apply for the pehchan card and then come back to the government pick up the yarns even apply for the sanction of a loom and then resell their goods back to the government who picks it up at a bulk price sometimes and resells it again to either across the country or the diaspora that is more than eager to pick up stuff that comes authentically from their land of goa as some of the government officials ended up telling me that there are times when they mark up the price of what they're supposed to give to the weavers who manufacture the actual product so that they are incentivized to come back with more and keep going at their art There is a dichotomy between some people who say that the price of the kunbi needs to be brought down it is currently around 600 6000 or so some say it should be brought down so it is within the normal reach of a person some say it should actually be increased so it gets the importance of the once in a lifetime weave just like something like a kanjivaram enjoys today with a standardized scheme coming in to save the day perhaps this divergence of minds will be overtaken by the forces of the market demand and supply will determine whether prices should be driven up or down enterprising entrepreneurs and weavers and of course fashion designers showcase a lot of designs that could be could be made into watches wallets folders pouches bags wall clocks there is so much that this versatile fabric can carry and yes the sarees and the clothing made out of it is absolutely comfortable because the fabric breathes effortlessly why doesn't every woman in goa have a kunbi like every woman is supposed to have perhaps invested in a paithani or a kanjivaram or a jamdani why can't we give the same love to kunbi that the other weavers enjoy the romance of kunbi perhaps has not been woken up enough within the state of goa and within our hearts but the kunbi is not a sari it is a story goa has only one handlo Thank you for watching us. I hope that you truly enjoy our content and continue to subscribe and watch us on a regular basis. Vigor is going places this year. This is going to be yet another important year for our existence and growth and I hope for your support this year as well. I wish you all a very happy 2024 and may we continue to succeed and soar higher as a nation.